For the Neil Prendeville Show, you found it. Red FM. Now, uh, interestingly, you know, you talk about people in the workplace. I got a text in this morning saying we're listening to your program in work earlier today. This was from yesterday's program about people being cold in their homes. And I couldn't wait to get home to email you. We were all frozen to bits at work. You can see our breath when we breathe or speak. I would love to say that this is a one-off, that the heating was broken, but it's uh, been like this every winter. You might ask, why do we stay there? Well, you have only to look to the last few years for the answer. There were no jobs. We're all sitting at our desks all day with our coats, scarves and fingerless gloves on. It's bloody ridiculous. It's more like a prefab than a solid structure with no insulation and it's freezing. The boss has an additional plug-in heater in the office, while the rest of us have useless storage heaters. They're a bit like pouring a kettle into the Arctic Ocean. Ah, I feel you're cold. You remind me, actually, of, uh, you know, uh, A Christmas Carol. You remind me of the conditions that Bob Cratchit's got to live in, work in, sorry, got to work in, with old Ebenezer Scrooge. It sounds horrible. And I know know how you're feeling, because uh, for many people over the past few days contacting this programme, particularly in public authority housing, they're having terrible trouble um, with their boilers and with their heating system. And it seems to happen year in, year out. You look at the ladies up in Mayfield and Ord Balia, you've got three or four different housing estates all being serviced and served by one inadequate boiler. I mean, it's ridiculous. So undoubtedly we'll have more on that throughout the course of the morning. Uh, the papers this morning talk about not here comes the sun, as the Beatles used to say, but here comes the snow. Now, this will be high ground and western counties, particularly northwestern counties. It'll be snow time. And they're talking about um, places like Leitrim and Mayo and Sligo and Donegal. And again, as the Independent points out, motorists are being warned about not just heavy snow, but also the risk of black ice. It's January. We should be expecting these things and we should be gritting and we should be salting. The examiner carries photographs, particularly of a car, uh, between, um, I guess on the, I'm not sure whether it was the Cork side or the Kerry side of McCroom, uh, on its side in the ditch, crashed through a concrete fence even. Uh, no injuries, but, uh, and also the story of two school buses skidding on icy roads in Cork as well. Lana was mentioning in the news about a boost for drivers. Experts say the prices of petrol and diesel are set for even more reductions. Uh, you know, if you're getting 104, 105, you're doing really well. If you're still paying 115 in garages, you got to wonder why. Um, and sooner or later, it should dip below 99. It could be 99.9 like it is in some parts of the country. Bad for the economy. This is a bad sign uh, when you hear of stories like oil dropping to $10 a barrel. But good for the punter and good for motorists for now. Drivers boost as diesel dips under a euro a litre, according to this morning's Mirror. Um, And we also, talking about numbers, we also know now that February 26th is the date that Ireland will go to the polls. I'll be talking later on in studio with Jerry Adams. We'll be asking about the uh, election date and a lot of other things besides that. Um, As well as that, uh, there's also been some stories with regards to social media, of course. Um, And I want to go straight to that now uh, because this is something we've been working at. Uh, for the past 24 hours, 36 hours or so. There is other kind of social media stories making the papers today, including that, you you know, you can be fired if you've been warned in the workplace that you can't be engaging with person in personal emails on work time or on work equipment. That's an interesting story because you think there would be some give and take on that, particularly on tea breaks, coffee breaks and lunch breaks. But more on that throughout the course of the morning. We've been contacted. We've been contacted personally by about 20 girls now. Um, I believe there's double that or more. But we've been in touch either vocally and directly or by email and text and messaging with at least 20 girls uh, on Lee's side who've had their innocent Facebook photographs harvested, taken, stolen and put up on an international porn site under a semi-link on the porn site called Ireland Exposed. It's more like Cork Exposed. And this is why I believe there is a very serious Cork link to this uh, international website. They engage in picture swapping there. They engage in picture trading. They engage in photoshopping the young girls' uh, selfies or Facebook Facebook pages. They put vile comments under them. The photoshopping is disgusting. There are pics and threads of different girls, some as young as 13 and 14. Um, uh, And I have to say, it, it really, again, is very important that the message gets out there that you have to be ultra careful online because there are weirdos in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Um, And you need to be so careful about who you allow in as friends to your Facebook page, who you engage with, because honestly, honestly, uh, this is very, very serious stuff. Case, good morning. 
Good morning. Now, uh, that's just by way of introduction. You have first-hand experience of what this is like. You were left terrified after your pictures uh, were taken from your Facebook page. Firstly, can you tell me about the photographs? Um, well, the photographs were listed from my Facebook page, which is on private and was on private. Um, I started receiving anonymous messages um, through, if you check on your Facebook, there's a section called Other Messages where people who aren't your friend can contact you. Um, and I received a message from a man telling me that my photos are being used on a website. Um, and I didn't believe him. I didn't look at it because you kind of just ignore messages from strangers. Mm-hmm. But um, he kept writing to me. And eventually I wrote back saying, OK, prove it. Send me a screenshot of the website. And he did. Um, so I went on to it anyway. And there was a whole forum dedicated to me. Um, my whole name was there. There was a link to my Facebook. This person was sounded like he knew me very well, actually. And he was referring to my friends in it as well. Yeah, um, a whole forum means that there's a subsection just dedicated to photographs of you. Yeah, my full name was there with a link to my Facebook page. And a link as well from the porn site yeah. to your Facebook page. They were sending me, they they just do stuff to photos and uh, I was getting them through my Facebook as well as on this forum. How did you react? I was absolutely, this was a night before a review as well in college, I was absolutely distraught. So I'd never heard of anything like this happening. And um, I don't know, I had a bit of a little breakdown, I suppose. Yeah, a meltdown, I can imagine. Did you say it yeah. to anybody? Um, I didn't after a while. Um, I told my mother then and she was absolutely disgusted and very upset, actually. And then I actually, in college, they noticed that I was a bit distressed and they they found out as well. Right, so. yeah. Now... In, interestingly, your photographs were, you were what, 17? Um, there were a few taken back. Yeah, if you went back, there was some that would have been 17, yes. Okay, Any anyone, the reason I ask this is I've been talking with girls and we'll be talking with them this morning who were as, their photographs were as young as 14. In fact, a, a, a mother is going to talk with me whose daughter was 10. Yeah, there's, I've, I went on it yesterday to... Just, I used to go back and check every here and there to make sure my photos were taken down and there is 100% underage girls on that website. Yeah, and, and actually yeah. the threads and the conversations amongst these people, I'm going to say these guys, I'm assuming it's men, yeah. um, spoke very excitedly about the fact that these they're fully were aware. underage girls. Yes, yeah. yeah, they're fully aware of their age. Yeah, um, I have a list of 22 names here from a, a subsection to this website called Ireland Exposed and it goes through all of the Christian names of the girls and in each one of these Christian names then there's a subsection with a list of all of their photographs and you can click into the various photographs. Yeah. Um, this is psychological, this is emotional assault or abuse if you like. Some of the photographs um, are... All of the photographs are lovely. They're all lovely girls. Some of them are really, really lovely girls, innocent girls going about their own lives, taking photographs of themselves. Um, uh, And in actual fact, they're not in any way provocative and they're not in any way kind of trashy photographs. But the way that they've been doctored and the comments that are up there um, are are disgusting as to the things that these men would like to do to these young girls, you know? Uh, A lot of it I can't broadcast on daytime radio because it involves... Uh, quite abusive and foul language, but it does talk of rape. Yeah, uh, one of them has a subsection for a young girl, uh, and and some guy says if she doesn't. St- I mean, he's so stupid. He says if she doesn't stop posting these provocative pictures, she's going to be raped, and she deserves to be raped. So there are even guys on there who seem to think that the girls are up for this kind of thing. They're not at all. They're totally innocent photographs. And there's also a bunch of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine girls together. I'd say they were out uh, celebrating something. I don't know whether it's kind of like a, a, an end of school year or something. And they're standing outside deals on uh, the Grand Parade. And the headline under them, under them is Cheap Whores Outside Deals. Yeah. And all of their faces, their full body shots there. So, um, what did you, what did you, did you talk to the guards about it? Um, I did. I went into Anglesey Garda Station 
And I mentioned that my photos had been taken from my Facebook page. Um, it was by someone who knew me because my Facebook page was on private. So it was someone I was friends with and I'm not the type of person to accept strangers on Facebook. Um, just for my own safety, really. And I went in and they merely told me, put your Facebook page on private. That was it. So how did they get in? How did they get into the Facebook page? Yeah. It was someone I knew. They, the person claimed to know me. Like they mentioned, like there was a, let's say there was a, a group shot up on my Facebook. They take, they'd taken that and they'd mentioned my friends in it as well. And it did sound like they were very familiar with who I was. Was this a man? Okay. Uh, but you didn't know him. It's just that he claimed that he knew you. Yeah, I tried to find out who it was. Um, it was his name on the thing was under an alias and I couldn't figure it out. Um, I know it did sound like, because I didn't accept strangers on my Facebook page, so it must have been someone, because anyone can post up on this website. So, I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, but you yeah, but you 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 let him in because he knew different friends of yours. Um yeah. yeah uh, and this guy says, "Check out my pic threads. I've a fake Facebook with sluts as friends, some I know yeah. personally." And then he's yeah. got reams and reams of responses from guys who want to trade photographs. They want to swap photographs. They ask questions about particular girls. How can I get more photographs of this girl and that girl and so on and so forth. Um, And the guy uh, whose Facebook page, and it's a fake Facebook page, um, has got a a, a photograph of a very prominent international boxer as his Facebook pic. Okay. Um, So what, what advice would you give to young girls and parents? Um, I would 100% sure, like, make sure that your Facebook page is on private because you see girls these days now and they're accepting anyone. Like, you see girls with like 2,000 Facebook friends, you don't know all of those people personally. You have to be so careful because they can, they can do stuff with the most innocent photographs. And were, were your photographs doctored? Yes, they were. And how comfortable are you to tell me about how they were doctored? Um... They were taking, uh, they're kind of cropping my face and sticking it on images of just things of like a sexual reference, really like nature, that kind of thing. And then, um, I probably shouldn't say it on air, but there was another side to it where they were printing off photographs of me and doing stuff to the photographs. Yes, I I know, I saw all of that and we don't need to be too graphic about that and then there were male body parts together with girls' faces and things like that so that's fairly graphic, I understand. There was hundreds of them. uh, According to the website, my forum had gotten 4,000 or something hits, I'm not sure. Do you, do you, 4,000 hits, do you feel violated? Absolutely. Like, it's it's absolutely horrible. It's, It's absolutely traumatic. Do you need help in this regard, do you think? Um, no, I'd say, like I, my, I had a lot of friends, so I got to talk to them. But yeah, no, it, it could affect people very badly, mentally. So I hope I you'll know. be fine. I hope you'll recover. I, I hope you will. Uh, I'm sure you will. The other girls, say, for instance, in the 26 list of young Cork girls, do you, have you seen that list? Do you know any of those girls? I recognise two of those girls, actually, yes. Two of the names. Yeah, and I was tempted to contact them because someone contacted me to let me know mine was up and I, I think these girls should know so that they can... Because I, I contacted the website myself personally and they took them down eventually. Yes, okay, all right. Listen, I really appreciate you taking the call. I'm going to clip ahead here and talk with some other girls and mums, but I want to thank you for being first out of the blocks. Thank you, Kate, and good yeah, luck to you, all no right? No problem, thank you. You're very good. Morning to you. Sarah, good morning. Good morning, Neil. Uh, you have two daughters? I have. Okay, thank you for holding, incidentally. Appreciate that. Now, um, your 10-year-old and your 14-year-old daughters... um, Yeah. Are they 10... My 14-year-old, they're 17 and 11 now. But my daughter would have been 14 when they took those pictures from her page, which is private as well, like that other girl said. Um, She's actually distraught. We only found this out last night, late last night. Um. There must be 50 pictures over there, but I'm actually in one of the pictures on holidays with the two girls. Some are holiday pictures. Some are people having fun with friends. Some are on the beach. Some are out at a party. 
Um, some are actually there's a complete subsection on this website actually of photographs taken of girls in public places when they don't even know they're being photographed actually and some of them with hidden cameras so there's all sorts of weird subsections and different types of perversion it's the most uh, scariest thing I ever saw yeah yeah. people could be that sick to take pictures of a 10 year old so you so you've seen your daughter's pictures yeah I saw my she showed me them last night we looked at them um she was very upset. Someone texted her last night after this was highlighted and said that they think they saw pictures of her when they went on it. So we looked and there was loads and some of them were dating back to 2013, which she would have been 14 then. Were there comments under the photographs? There was. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Okay. Can you give me a general idea without without overly um, upsetting yourself? Just um, what did I want to do to her? Like and when she comes home, when I love coming home to this little one and like vile, vile things that, you know. There's a lovely photograph of a young girl who clearly took a selfie of herself to put it up to let people know uh, that she was on the South Mall and she's outside um, the Imperial Hotel. It's a lovely photograph of her face, um, nice smile uh, and that's been put up online and it's got a whole thread then of what are these men would like to do to this young Cork girl? I just think it's it's actually a proper abuse. That's what it is. I put it down as as a form of like child abuse that they think that it's all right to do that. Like they're young kids, and either way, that no one gave them permission. And there was a few comments on your own page that people were saying well, that's what you get for putting pictures up. And I mean. I don't think children should be on on lane to be honest with you anyway. I'd be kind of fighting with my own daughter about things like that. But now she's almost eighteen and these pictures were only taken down from her page last August. Did you have any access to her, her Facebook activity when she was fourteen? Yeah. Did you monitor it? Yeah. Of course, you and, uh, yeah. and looking at our Facebook page, you're not going to see any problems. Not at all. Because you're not going to know that things are going to be harvested or taken from it. But her page was private. I always made sure of that. Yeah. That's why it's obviously someone she knows that's getting at them. Or there's other ways of getting in. Obviously, there must be. Now, there, were, there was none taken from my page or anything like that. And my 10-year-old daughter doesn't have a page, nor won't she have one. Um, but her pictures were on my older daughter's page. Unfortunately, profile pictures, which are the pictures up on the front menu, they're not protected, so they can be cut and pasted. But I if don't somebody, think though, some of these were. I don't think these, all these were, were profiled. No, I'm just saying that they can. But oh, yeah. I, I actually believe that young people should be allowed to experiment with the camera to a certain extent. And I actually believe myself that young people should be allowed and if a girl wants to put on a big bit of makeup and glam it up for a camera and put it up on her Facebook page I actually think that that's nobody's business but her and her friends you know I'm not yeah. saying in a kind of an overly provocative way because no parent would want that but mm-hmm. there's some beautiful photographs of young girls who have clearly made an effort with regards to their yeah. makeup and their eyeliner and they put on yeah, some my daughter would be the same she that's that's you know Give them a bit of confidence in themselves. Give them a bit of confidence. Let them experiment with things like that. Let them find they're they're experimenting and they're adventuring with their own style. They're trying to find their own style. um, And that should be allowed. It's a hard age to, you know, things going on and lying and bullying and all that. And putting pictures up is just their way of expressing themselves, I think. I agree. No, I agree. And absolutely looking for confidence from other people saying, you know, you look well and... Because that's what they do, you know, friends do to, to each other on, online, as far as I can see. Anyway, they're, they're all lovely friends she has. Um, but this is just a whole different level. Like, Yes, here is a series you know. of local and national sluts. Uh, and then there's a long catalogue then of girls and you click on the girls and you go into the subsection and all of their names, uh, all of their photos. aren't these things being monitored though? Is there not something online or something that, that there's no law that people can just use pictures of children I mean you'd know my daughter looks very young now and she definitely looked 14 when she was 14 Right and what did you do about it? I only found out last night so at the moment now I'm waiting to get out of my icy terrace and I'm going to go to the guards Yeah um, the, the, the guy that we believe is behind this actually mm-hmm. knows some of the girls uh, in one or two um, comments that he makes online he says um, about one girl in particular 
she works in a bar that I drink in. Uh, I know her very well. She thinks I'm her friend. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, my God. Yeah? That's actually horrendous. It's actually scary. Really, is it scary to think that that's what you, that's the society we're living in now? One of the girls told me yesterday that her photograph started when she was about fourteen, and but and they kept on harvesting her photographs because she had her own thread. Like she was kind of a, a celebrity amongst these guys, mm-hmm. uh, but that the interest in her photographs started to drop off when she got to about seventeen. Uh, I'll speak to her in a few minutes' time, actually. Um, so it, it, it's clear to me that the yeah, younger. They Young. know they're underage, like the people that are looking at it. The younger, the, yeah, my, my point is the younger my the better. My um, page or would be, she would have her own thread thing now on it as well, like a forum. Um, like she has her own little name on it and everything, you know, that they sexualized. Yeah, yeah. Just horrible, absolutely horrible. And how is she? I mean, I know you're upset. How is she? How's your daughter? She's just kind of shocked by it all, you know, and can't believe that that's that. that, that that was actually her because this was late last night when we found this out so she's actually in shock that was, how did I get at him and you know people are obviously going to say how because someone told her that she was on it last night someone obviously must, must have been looking through it to see were they on it you know yes yes of um, course yeah yeah. because this has been this kicked off with us yesterday morning because yeah. we started doing things on Facebook you highlighted it, that, yeah. that it was and I have to say I think you'll find Anglesey Street Garda Station very good from the chief okay. super down, Mick Finn down. He's well aware of what's going on here. They're right across it, uh, and they're on the ball on this. And and you will be you will be met very sympathetically as a parent. You know. Yeah, I'll go straight in there. And All right. Going to go straight in there now. Soon as soon as All right. Well, good luck with that, and let me know how Thank you get you on. Very sir. much, Neil. And thanks for highlighting. Not at all. Cheers for now. Take care. Back yeah. after the break on one eight fifty one zero four one zero six. The Neil Prenderville Show. <laughs> Weekdays from 9 a.m., 104 to 106, Red FM. Lines open on 1850 104 106. You can text 0868 104 uh, 106. Uh, some of the subsections with these photographs of uh, dozens upon dozens of Cork girls have uh, little um, tags under them with regards to what these men would like to do to these young girls. Um, and some of them use terms like, and I apologize for saying this at this hour of the morning, but. Um, uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's important that you get a, a flavour. Um, they talk about a, a cute little emo slut F-U-C-K pig in a description of a, a Cork girl who's uh, taken a photograph having put on some makeup and uh, glammed herself up because she's experimenting as young girls should do. Uh, another one is referred to as a slut princess. Another one is an uh, innocent little girl called a uh, little cutie. Um, there are numerous ones that refer to cork girls as dirty cork whore and then there's terms like cheap and sluts uh, some of them are taken at home some of them are taken um, in the bedroom some are taken in groups of friends uh, some of them are taken uh, in public places and then they're up online and then there's people asking how many photographs do you have this girl and will you trade this one for this one and then references like that um, it's pretty scary stuff I can tell you of that you can be sure Natasha good morning Hi, Neil. How are you? I'm very good. Um, you uh, are well into your 20s now. Yeah, uh, I'm 27 now. How, how, long, how long do you guys think this had been going on? I don't have a clue. My photograph, like that was taken when I was about 22, I think. So right. God knows now how long that photograph has been up there. So it sounds to me, with no disrespect to you, that you were you were quite old at that stage then. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Did you look younger? I yeah, well, I used to look young now. Needs to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know what I mean. I, like because I, I'm seeing photographs of, of of most definitely minors, by and large minors. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 And and give me a flavour of the photographs. It was just basically a picture of me and my friends sitting down in the bar. I was actually doing a waxing night for charity the same night. I remember the night it was taken. Other photographs of my friends were just her sitting down, just fully clothed. Um. My friend, for example, just this second only just messaged me. She's living in Australia and she just said that her photo, a lot of photos have been put up. Her photos have been photoshopped where she's completely nude and she's absolutely traumatised over it. I mean, there was sexual references made, the word rape has been used and she's absolutely traumatised over it. Is she hysterical? She's hysterical, yeah. She's in work now at the moment in Melbourne and she doesn't know what to do with it. 
Yeah, yeah. D- I- did she does she recall the photographs that were used? Um, some of them, yeah. I haven't been talking to her much. Like she literally only just contacted me this morning, so we haven't spoke much. But she just wants me to get her point across as well. It's absolutely horrendous. Like you can do, you can do anything with photographs. You know, this anything. like photoshopping can do anything at all. The technology yeah. is there now. The IT advancements are there. Um, I mean, I was lucky enough not to have my photograph photoshopped, you know. So, and I haven't even been on the site. I don't even want to go on the site and see what comments are written. On well, the thankfully, we've had, we've had it take. Well, well thankfully, it, it, we've had it taken down since we since we started on this yesterday. Uh, it's yeah, now- I actually couldn't access it myself either. So. But, but you know, they say, I read somewhere this morning, they say that the more that you talk about things like this and the more that you warn people, about 60 to 70 percent of people, may, you know, make changes in their life if they're told things like this, you know. So I'm saying that, you know, if 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 50 percent or 60 percent of young people, um, you know, change their online habits, that's a good thing as a result of something like this. Stop adding people that they don't know on Facebook. I mean, I wouldn't add anyone that I don't know. Especially young girls are targeted to this as well, you know. And and tell me, do, were there comments under your photograph? I don't know, to be honest. I don't have a clue. I don't even want to know what was done to me. So I can only imagine the filth, the filth that's actually spoken. Did you know any of the other girls on the long lists that were available? Did you even see those lists? I didn't see the list, no. Um, a very good friend of mine, um, she lives in Belfast. A lot of her photographs have been put up. That picture that I was in was actually taken from her page. And all those photographs are pretty old as well. Like, she's in her, tw- her early 20s. And she's the same age as me. So, again, like, we don't know how long the photographs have been up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There also would seem to be uh, quite a number of cork men involved in viewing the photographs and commenting on the photographs. Would any of the girls have a worry? Like, one of the girls I spoke to said that she'd be worried when she was out that she wouldn't know who'd know her or who would recognise her or who might be looking at her, do you know? Well, I would be extremely worried. Like, I mean, we don't know these guys that are walking around Cork. I mean, our faces are on an international pornography site. Like, we don't know what kind of people have seen us already that have seen us around the street and said, oh, that's that girl or, do you know, is that putting our lives at risk as well? And it also would appear that a number of the girls would know the guy who's been putting these photographs up from what he's been saying online. Yeah, well, I've seen people, um, about three people tagged me in that post for Brian Murphy's picture of Conor McGregor up on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I haven't been able to access his page from my page. Yeah. But um, he seems to be the middleman of it all, really, I suppose. Well, that's a fake name. That's a fake photograph. That's a fake Facebook page. Yeah. Mind you, the Garda Shikana may have ways of tracking down whoever it is is behind that Facebook page. Hopefully. Let me talk to um, to Katie here because uh, I just want to get an update from her. Is that all right, Natasha? No problem at all. But I want to say thank you for taking the call. No problem, thank you. Cheers and mind yourself. Sorry. Katie, good morning. Since, are you all right? Yeah. Okay, we spoke yesterday. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I did a pre-record with you, and I could run the pre-record, but um, because a lot of you guys have been to uh, the guards since I spoke to you, I thought I'd just talk to you live instead, see if there was an update. How have you been since I spoke last? I'm absolutely off the walls. Um, I went to Mayfield Guard Station last night. First, I went to Anglesey Street, and um, I'm absolutely disgusted. <laughs> There's no immediate problem. Okay, maybe not to you, but like there's child pornography of me on the internet and that is actually an immediate problem. Like, I don't know why that would be considered so minor. Like, I guarantee if I went in there and it was a five-year-old on the internet, there would be huge concern. But because I'm not five, I'm 14, it's somehow not as bad, which really, considering legally I'm a child, is just outrageous. Um, I was told in Anglesey Street that there's nothing they could do for me um, because I can only file a report on my local, even though I have been on the phone to Mayfield, which is my, I don't know, it's not my local, but it's like my district. I don't know. They're my other local when Glanmire is closed. So I have been on the phone to Mayfield the night prior at half ten to a sergeant. He told me that I could make a report anywhere. So that's what I told Anglesey Street. And they were just, 
absolutely so rude, so inconsiderate, just basically told me to go away. Um, so I then went to Mayfield. Um, Wait a second, you minutes. said that there's photographs of you, doctored photographs um, with uh, vile comments, threatening rape and all sorts of things yeah. on a porn site and there are do- dozens upon dozens of other Cork girls like you. And what did they say? They essentially just told me that there's nothing to do about it. He was actually annoyed at me because I tried to argue with him and say that I just think that's so unreasonable. Um, completely calm and level-headedly. Okay, well, I can tell you there's a different there's a different climate down there this morning now because they certainly are investigating. From the top down, they're aware of it. Um, and uh, maybe, maybe, you know, you, you just happen to walk up to the desk to a guy who may not have been all that off fay with what you were trying to say, you know? Well, that's fine, but I yeah. then went to Mayfield and they were, like, not much better, so... All right, well, I wouldn't, d- don't worry about that because uh, wheel, wheels are turning in that regard. But when we spoke yesterday, you were describing photographs of you uh, when you were 14. Yeah, the worst ones are when you're 14, yeah. Right, and uh, interest in you started to decline then when you hit about 17 or 18, was it? They actually stopped posting um, in August after my death. Um, which is just before I turned 19. Right. And how many photographs do you think of you were used? They've followed my whole social media since I was 14. They didn't like post a few photographs. They've actually followed my entire social media. So your life really, your your life has been shadowed, if you like, by these men for four years. Yeah, like for lack of a better description, I've been cyber stalked for four years. Um, They took my statuses and everything and updated my statuses on the page. Like Meaning? Like, if I put up a star saying Happy Christmas, they, they upload it and we're like, oh my God, she said Happy Christmas, and then, like, threats and strange comments. The threats are of a sexual nature and, of, and, a, and a graphically violent nature. Yeah. That must be very frightening for you now, knowing that, that you have been cyber-stalked like that for so long, unbeknownst to yourself. Exactly, yeah. To be honest, I'm just wondering, like, how many times have I walked St. Patrick Street and an absolute, like, weirdo has seen me and been like, oh my God, that's the girl from the website. Because the amount of views that I have on that website is more disgusting than the post itself. What I kind have over a million views. <sighs> Does that mean a different, a million different times your photographs have been looked at? Yeah. Why, why, why? That's a good question. I what, don't know. What kind of photographs do they use? Um, there's one of me standing in my kitchen... Um, fully clothed before people start attacking me again. Okay, like you do, you mean that you, have people been attacking you that there have been provocative photographs, is it? Yeah, people on the internet think that if you take a selfie, you deserve to be um, harassed. Well, unbeknownst to yourself, berated by paedophiles on the internet, which I don't feel is an appropriate reaction at all. I don't think children can be blamed for the action of paedophiles. Um, I think paedophiles are the problem, not children. But a lot of people on the internet have been commenting, trying to humiliate myself and other girls, saying it's their own fault for putting photos on the internet. Um, and when I actually looked at these people further, they had photos of their own children on the internet. So I don't know how that works. Um, so some of these people that are giving you grief are parents themselves saying you deserve it. Yeah. And do you know what's actually really, really sad about that is I hope that no one ever takes their children's photos. Um, I really do. But it's such a possibility and I feel like because we're adolescent girls in particular uh, in the photos that that's why they're not taking it seriously enough because the people I looked at, most of them had young children and I feel like they're like kind of separating. Like we we look older than their children so they're kind of putting a mentality where oh, only good things happen to good people kind of a t- or, and bad things happen to bad yeah, people. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, you know if I mean? yeah, like if you look at some of the photographs of some of the girls, right, they are making a real effort as young girls to dress up, right? They're doing the makeup, they're glamming it up, they're wearing, um, you know, the type of clothing that you expect teenage girls to wear now and then some of them are in provocative poses, right? So, some of them, not not all of them, but just some of them. And some of them are selfies into a mirror then with all their hair done up and everything. But in the eyes of a weirdo, and this is posted up online, they think that the girls are being provocative when in actual fact all they're doing is being experimental in, priv- in private amongst their friends, right? Isn't that it, really? Yeah, I, I mean, suppose, but people don't, they don't look past 
it's very easy to say, oh, well, there's weirdos in the world and that's why we should hide. But you know what? Like, there's cars on the road. Do you never cross the road? Like, you can't... It's not a valid argument, really, to say that. I feel as well, like, seeing the photos, some of the photos are posed provocatively. You can't really say that because, like, if I put a seven-year-old in a bikini, would you then say that the seven-year-old was provocative? No, I no. wouldn't. And No, I'm saying in the eyes of a paedophile or a weirdo, on this website, they're going to say, and they are saying, she's asking for it. That's what they're saying. Yeah. But That's I why they like... use terms like cheap and dirty and slut. Mm, yeah. They see this as being open season then, you know? Yeah, very much so. Because I feel like they felt like this was never going to get out there. There's a Which subsection of young... Common. Yeah. There's a subsection then that deals with young girls who are pregnant. Are you aware of that? I am, yeah. One of my friends is actually on it. Um, she wanted me to mention her because the amount of comments that are attacking her specifically are horrific. What comments? Um, on Facebook. Yeah, no, but what kind of comments? Um, just, again, blaming her and the usual kind of reaction you can get from the general public in times like this, trying to make themselves feel safe by saying it'll never happen to me. If your own fault happens to you, I'm not going to do that so it won't happen to me. Um, which is the wrong reaction because really you should you should be concerned for your own safety and your children. You should be concerned for everyone's safety. No one is safe. Like unless you never upload a picture to the internet ever, you're not safe. Like and even then, if you didn't upload a picture, someone can take a picture of you without your permission. So you're not safe. So don't think by attacking other people that you will then comfort yourself into feeling safe because you're not, and you never will be. And um, and and tell me, uh, you know, you say you, your pictures were viewed a million times. Um, over a million, Over yeah. a million times, uh, and some of them when you were as young as 14. Do, do you know if, uh, were any of those photograph, f- photographs photoshopped or doctored? Um, yeah, there was a few. Mine weren't as bad as others. Um, I had the odd bit and bob put next to me here and there. The odd um, bit and bob is male appendage, incidentally. Yes, yeah. unfortunately. And you saw, did you, you saw that? I did, yeah. that make you sad, upset or angry? Um, kind of angry, to be honest, because I just don't... I obviously don't, as a person who is not a paedophile, I don't understand why. Um, another thing that bewilders me greatly is the fact that I actually have um, a follow page on Facebook for modelling images because I would do um, bits of glamour modelling. Um, and, like, if they wanted, like, provocative images, there are provocative images there um, that they could have taken. Well, no, they wouldn't, be interested, they wouldn't be interested in stuff that would be a little bit more mature, you know? That's exactly it. That's what scares me. Like, they yeah. chose images that were more innocent. Okay, hold that thought. We'll come back after the break. Neil Prenderville from 9am the only show you need Okay, um, I want to wrap uh, with Katie at this point in time because I'm going to be under pressure for time but you said to me yesterday Katie that some of the girls were as young as 12, is that right? Yeah, it appears to me in some of the images some girls are from 12 up, yeah. Okay, and you also said to me that you know quite a number of the other girls that were on the porn website, is that right? Approximately 45 so is that the number we're talking about or is it more than 45? That's the number we know about. Um, last night I went to the gym and I came home um, and I don't bring my phone and I looked at my phone and I had uh, been added to group chat with about 20 more girls who had find, found themselves on the website. So is that 20 plus the 45? No, that's 20 plus uh, the previous 20. Okay, so we're at around about mid 40s. Now, one final thought for you before I leave you for now. We may well talk again. This Facebook incident, this is a texter called Brian, says, This Facebook incident might, at long last, knock a bit of sense into these young girls. The dangers of leaving... Hang on, let me read it anyway. Let me read it anyway. The dangers of leaving... The dangers of uh, leaving your profile open to a world full of weirdos and sexual predators. It's all about common sense, but common sense ain't that common when it comes to social media, it seems. I have seen this comment um, and I would like to tell him his attitude is appalling. Um, Second of all, I feel definitely that he's uneducated as to what's actually happened because out of 45 of us, not many of us had our profiles on public. I didn't have my profile on public. 
the new girls who were um, discovered on the site, the people had actually taken their tagged photos from public pages like their basketball team or like their camogie team and taken like photos from like their school website. This is very <laughs> spooky then what you're describing. Camogie teams, basketball teams, school websites. There's a lot of work and research gone into this. Oh yeah, there is like and it's just it's just not appropriate to say we need sense. We don't need sense. You know, paedophiles need to be dealt with. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not yeah. um a lot of comments were like that. Um one comment in particular, if anyone wants to look at the page, I went absolutely haywire on um because all he did was, oh, well, like, if girls didn't, you know, uh, pose provocatively and take pictures for likes, then this wouldn't happen. You're wrong, OK? Because paedophiles were around before Facebook and this is just a new outlet for them. Sure. And it doesn't matter. They don't say, this girl is posing provocatively, I pick her. There were girls on that website, out of 45 of us, like, you can't say every one of us was posed proactively or... No, not, no, not all or... of them. No, you're absolutely right. Not all. Some of this... Remember we spoke yesterday about that young, young girl. She's a lovely girl who just took a selfie of herself in the photo, in, in, the, in the mirror at home in her bedroom uh, to, to upload. Just a lovely, lovely photograph. Remember her? Yeah, there are... I My heart broke for her because that. the things that were said about that poor creature was just terrible. I mean, just the comments like that are so, again, they're very much the mentality of good things happen to good people, bad things happen to bad people. I'm going to keep my mental state safe by assuming it will never happen to me or my children because we do this, this, this. There's no set formula. Like, yeah, you can't you're, you're, th- Some of them made out that you were the fault and not the victim. Many of them. Yeah, did, yeah. Okay. And I just right. think that, okay. I hope, I wish that that was the case because if that were the case, there wouldn't be as many of us suffering. Um, and it wouldn't happen to them. Um, no one, like, no one is ever safe, really, on the internet okay. or in real life. Okay, stay in touch. We'll talk again, all right? I'm going to plough ahead for now. We may well be back to you, all right, for now? Okay. Cheers, Katie. Thanks. thanks for taking the call and thanks for working with me yesterday. You were a great help. Download the Neil Prendival podcast for free from iTunes. Clark's Red FM. Uh, this happened to me. I am 15 in one of those pictures. It's absolutely sick. And the things that the profiles are saying about me are disgusting. It needs to be shut down. I can't believe how long the accounts have been posting pictures too. One of the accounts was created back in 2012 and it's still there. It's horrible. To be honest, regardless of where I post my pictures, especially when I post them on my private profile with my friends, it's nobody's business. I did not ever give my consent for someone to use those on a porn site. My pictures have been viewed nearly 3,000 times. And that could completely tarnish anybody's reputation. You know, whether it's once or 3,000, or in the case of Katie earlier on, over a million, wrong is wrong is wrong. There is an enormous amount of texts and emails on this. I mean, really and truly, reams and reams of people have been commenting. And lots of girls themselves, just like Kira, have been contacting us about their own experience. Uh, Ronan. Hi. How could you have featured on this site, please? Um, well, basically what happened was um, a friend that appeared on the website um, told me yesterday that it was a picture of the two of us that was posted. And basically what it looked like was was that someone was posing at me sending pictures of her around to people. So it looked as if I was the one that was posting these pictures. And that's that's basically how I got involved in it. And it, was some, it was some fight to get yesterday morning. Like. Right. And the girl that you're with, does she feature in lots of photographs on the site? She, there's a few of her, and not as many as some of the other girls, but she is there. And are there comments attached to the pictures? Yeah, like really disgusting comments. Okay, and do you fear that that picture could be shared elsewhere and that it could have a knock-on effect? I mean, are you a career guy or are you a student or, or what are you well, doing? Yeah, do? I'm, I'm a student teacher, like, and we have to be very careful about what we post online anyway. And like, it does not think you, how you can't be incriminating yourself with anything like, anything like that. And the picture was a totally innocent picture from a day out we had in it was about a year and a half ago. But for something to appear just to be related to a site like that is enough to tarnish any sort of a reputation you might have. And if it's easy to get onto one site like that, it's easy to get onto anything else. These pictures can be moved, you know. Do you think that this could dog you through life or you could find that if you were going for job interviews or security clearances or bank loans or mortgages or whatever, that it could be thrown at you? I don't think so because of the coverage it's getting now that... There's so many people that are 
they, they know they've been wronged and it's getting the coverage that it deserves that it's wrong people know it's wrong so and and personally like mo- we all know that there's nothing that we've done that can be that can incriminate us you know it's not as if that we've done anything illegal it's somebody else that's making it look that way so yeah, I mean, everybody's talking about that. All of the papers have picked up on our story from yeah. yesterday, so you can easily explain it if it arises in a job interview or anything like that. But oh, it's course. just that it's the having to explain it part yeah, I'm talking that, about. Yeah, it shouldn't, have, it shouldn't be a problem. It shouldn't be something that any of us should have to do. How's your friend feel about all of this? Um, like when it's the first reaction was kind of like a, like what the hell? Like it, it was kind of kind of an initial shock, and then like the more we talked and, th- and thought about it, it was like. God, this is scandalous altogether. Like this, this isn't on. Like so, and it kind of turned into you get more angry about it. You're like, they're like, these are my photos, like my private photos that you think that is it's an innocent photo of you and your friends, but you don't think that someone is going to get that kind of a kick out of something like that. You know, and it's disgusting to be thinking about. It is, but you know what's really bizarre about this, and there are many things bizarre, but one of the things I just finally just share with you here, um, some of these girls have, um, it's almost like as if they have fan pages and they're being followed by these guys who become the girls, uh, th- they're fans, right? Um, and some of the girls then for four or five years, in the age of maybe 13 or 14, up to 17 or 18, their lives are followed in photos. And this has been going on with girls who've been followed and stalked uh, and their profiles updated constantly like you would follow One Direction or Westlife or Justin Bieber or Rihanna or, you know, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's pretty twisted and perverse. It's ridiculous. I don't know what sort of, I don't know what drives people to do these things. And, you know, like it's, it's sickening to think that there's somebody out there that like could be watching you and following what you're doing and you'd have no, you've no idea, really. Like, I know I'm not, I'm not half as affected as some of the other people. Like, I, do, I can't imagine what some of those girls are feeling today and yes, and yes, and how they're going to be feeling going on from here. But you know, like it is, it's just a sickening thing to be to to know that there's somebody out there that's that's watching you from a distance and that that's even possible in this day and age. And also that you may well know. Appreciate that, Ronan. Let me read out some more comments from some of the girls involved. Thank you for taking the call. Okay, no Darvla problem. says, there are at Bye-bye. least 100 pictures of me on the site. All my Snapchat and Facebook pictures, even new pictures, have just recently uploaded. And my Snapchat name is up there too. Since when did a bit of cleavage or a girl in a dress mean they give these horrible per- perverts consent to put us up on porn sites? Pictures of me when I was 15 that I deleted ages ago are up there now. I'm 19 and they are nothing but sick scum. Another girl here says, I'm horrified. I'm at work shaking. There are photographs of my daughters on this site from when my daughter daughters were 20 years old and indeed my 11-year-old. Uh, I feel sick to my stomach. Uh, I was even in one of the photos myself and there was a comment underneath saying, I'd rape the mother. I am beyond sickened. I only found out about this last night. I will certainly be going to the Garda Shikana today. I'd rape the mother. Um, Gar- is it Garrod or Gerard? Gerard, Neil, good Gerard, morning. Good dear. morning. Are you a dad? I am a dad of four beautiful girls and you know, to hear this is just horrendous because these are men, Neil, look at these. These are predators. That's the danger with it, you know. I agree. I agree 100%. Yeah. Yeah, these you know, are young. Like these they, are young kids. Your kids, perhaps. They, yeah, they gave me the name of the site, like, and I just closed it down. I said, and I like, I, I want to look and make sure my own kids are done. And but, like, you have to trawl through so much dirt to see if it's just wrong. Like, you actually wanted to see if your daughters were there. Yeah, I'm checking now because I'm actually concerned. Like, how many of us accept friends on Facebook that are friends of friends, and we don't actually look at who these people are? So, you know, you automatically have them into your friend list and before you know it, I suppose you have a scam Were you, were you at all conscious or did you have any security involvement in your daughter's pages or their online activity? Because um, I, no, I, I, I know I didn't. I, 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 I know my wife is, is, is probably across that a lot more, say, for instance, with my daughter, but I, I certainly would not be welcome, you know? You know what I'm no, saying? No, I wouldn't myself, Neil. Like, we're all entitled to a certain bit of privacy. And we all experimented, and I'm sure that the young lads out today with porn on their phones in school, and you know, we don't realise the damage is doing down along. And th- this is, I think, the knock-on effect. Of yeah, the there's a big difference between consulting, uh, consulting, yeah. uh, cons- consenting, and adults, consulting, yeah. uh, and and, and, and minors. You know, yeah. um, terrible. Yeah. 
You know, that, that's, that's the world we live in, Neil, you know, and it's it's getting sicker. And the fact, like, the Kate, that first girl that came on, I think was, like, I feel sorry for her. Like, she said, she doesn't know who's looking at her in the pub, and she goes, like, her life is, or can be now be in danger, any of those girls, because the predators that are out there might be watching them and say, I want that girl. And you don't know, the sick men that are out there, they could take advantage and go for that. Yeah, yeah that could be um, a, a very, 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 very dangerous thing for sure. But even if that yeah. were never to happen, it's it's w- it's way too invasive and it's way too per- predatory, even as it is. You know, it's, it's way too voyeuristic, you know, in that regard. It's actually disturbing it? to think that Irish men are just even, uh, they will go to this extent to it, their own nieces, nephews, daughters, that they don't care who they affect it. Terrible, you know. Okay, thank you for that. Nicole says it's a disgrace. A load of my friends are on it, and I'm taking a picture with them, and we can't get them down, take them down. Um, I'm in a picture with them, and we can't get them taken down. The things the men's are, the men are saying about us are disgusting. Something needs to be done. The men are even telling people where they see the local girls. So now we can't even feel safe walking around, and the guards saying that they can't do anything about it. Well, that was yesterday. The guard at Chicago are very much across it now. Chloe says I'm also a victim of this. It's disgusting. Vanessa says people could ease, could just as easily be doing the same thing about the pics on these girls' Facebook pages. To be fair, like if you don't want people perving on your pics, then don't put them on the internet in the first place. Pervs are everywhere, not just on web websites. Michelle says there's actually pictures up on it of girls clearly after being drugged up and raped and probably haven't clue about it. Sick world, disgusting people. Yes, there are other sub-threads as well, as I said, about, you know, the stuff like pregnant young girls. Um, there's other ones of drugged and raped girls. Um, I'm actually fuming. Whoever done this is going to get caught at some point. And I hope they lock the, I won't say that word up. I hope they lock them up. I'm sure there's plenty of people in prison doing a life sentence that would happily do another one. Pedophiles shouldn't be, should be put down like animals. It must be clearly a pathetic person who put these photo lists together first. But girls need to realize that when you put a photo online, it does not belong to you anymore. And you have a responsibility to mind yourself. And there are a lot of creeps out there who can download your photos and do whatever they want with them. My advice would be to make your page non-public. Don't have a friends list a thousand plus long. Stop posting photos wearing half nothing to get likes, which seems to be more common now than ever. It may be down to parents needing to be more strict for the under 18s. A 15 year old girl's page should be supervised by her mother 100% of the time. I don't know about anyone else, but I wouldn't like my daughter on this site. People should be careful. Uh, and Shell says, just took a look and it's shocking to see very young girls' pictures being shown. Very worrying for parents of young people, I can tell you. Well, I can't find any blame for the young girls, to be quite honest with you. I just don't think. It is young girls who are glamming it up and being overly provocative and leaving themselves open to trouble. I just don't, I don't buy that argument at all. Not from what I've seen. Uh, a lot of these are innocent girls. They're on their Facebook page. They're sharing experimental photographs with their friends or else they're just selfies, guys, that have been cropped, cut and photoshopped into different, different poses and into different sexual scenarios. Back after the... The Neil Prendeville Show. Weekdays from 9 a.m. 104 to 106 Red FM. Adele, good morning. Good morning, how are, are you, you? I'm good, thank you. Are you a working model now? Yeah, no, I'm just doing styling now, kind of tying them both in together. Okay, oh, was there yeah, a period yeah. when you did modelling? Say that again, sorry? Was, was there a period when you did modelling? There was, yeah, there was a, a good few years where I did modelling and something similar to what's happened to these girls happened to me, but this is on a completely different level altogether, this website. Did you have photographs or pictures taken of you then harvested and doctored on sites? Yeah, basically, um, I there was photos taken from my old Facebook pages and then when I set up a new one, they were taken from that as well. So I obviously realised that it was someone I was friends with on my Facebook account. Um, they were creating fake profiles on me on dating websites and uh, escort websites and that. Um, but there was nothing, I mean, the, this website's quite different in the sense that there's a lot of hate put into it. Mine, I don't think, was at that level at all, but it was going on for years and years, and no matter how many people I deleted off my page, I, you know, it kept coming up. Thankfully, something hasn't happened in two or three years now, and I, haven't, and I didn't end up on this website. Uh, so um, what but, were they using your photograph for? Um, mainly dating websites. Well, yeah, but what do you mean when you say that? They had your photograph on a dating website, doing what with it? Having, creating a whole account, having conversations, relationships online with people. I had people come up to me, you know, as I'm like, and guys, of course, you know, 
saying, why am I ignoring them? Why aren't I chatting to them? What? I never, met them. I never met them in my life. And they were saying, oh, I'm chatting to you on, I was chatting to you on whatever site or whatever, and I had never met them in my life. Yeah, like, my, like there's a time and effort that was put into it. But did that, lead to, did that lead to huge harassment? Um, I never got harassed directly. Like oh, but if a guy did. comes up to you and says, I'm chatting with you online, why aren't you calling me back or why aren't you chatting back? or te-? That is kind of like, it's very invasive. Well, luckily they were understanding when I explained the situation to them and I could probably tell by the shock of my face that I wasn't lying. But when I was abroad, someone did contact me on Facebook saying, oh, I finally found you. I thought you said you didn't have a Facebook page. I never knew who this guy was. He's from Limerick. And um, he sent me messages and photos of a, a relationship we were having online for six months. Adele, oh, that's yeah. weird. Mm, mirroring my Facebook page, if I put up um, a post of something, you know, maybe a promotion or something, it would go up on another site, you know, not long after. And it was actually someone I was doing work with in England that found those photos. He Googled me and um, found links to two or three, you know, inappropriate sites that I had no idea I was on or for how long for, but they were active. Um, they were regularly updated. So, were yeah, they making um, you out to be something that you weren't? Were they making you out to be saying things that you wouldn't, or to do that you would do things that you clearly wouldn't do? Oh yeah, absolutely. And it was photos of me and which is nearly out of promotion. Always another girl. Photos of me and you know girls that I did gigs with on the site, and you know you can imagine what it was saying. Um, a friend of mine. Looking there would be sexual time. references to those photographs. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. 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 A friend of mine contacted them and said that they knew, you know, he, he contacted them saying, you know, maybe he was interested in chatting with one of the girls online and they came back to him within five or ten minutes, within, you know, they came online. So they were obviously, you know, on, on the ball, keeping up to date on how often the page was being watched. Were they making out that you were a prostitute then? Yeah. Okay, so somebody then would say, as the angst would say, would reach out to book your services and then yeah. these guys would offer him another girl. Yeah. Or that when when my friend said to him, um, "Oh, I realise that this is a fake page," they like it went dead. You know, we deleted then and it disappeared and that kind of stopped. And then it started again and a little while later. And um, you, you know, my Facebook got hacked into fifteenth time. My Gmail account, you know, so my ex who's over in New Zealand, uh, uh, someone that was pretending to be me, added his girlfriend and mailed his girlfriend over there you know just madness so it, it, you know it, it came apparent to me that it was someone that I knew that was doing this to me okay hold um, that thought someone... you hold that thought I just want to finish our conversation and give you the time that you deserve after 11 our lines are open at one 104 106 Neil Prenderville from 9am the only show you need so Adele you then were being used um, for things that you know nothing about how long did it go on for do you think um, on and off, it went on for about three or four years. Okay. It would and stop, it would come back, and then it would uh, go quiet for a bit, and back to square one. Yeah. So, you know, well, I, I've been talking earlier this morning about very young girls um, used on this website, and I will have more between now and midday and probably tomorrow as well. But you were actually um, a model who probably mm-hmm. would have been doing, you know, provocative shots and lingerie shots. Is that what attracted them to you, do you think? No, I think whoever it was, like this thing now, is just a hate campaign, you know? I think that, you know, the photos that are up online of these girls aren't provocative, so I don't think that's the initial reason people do it. I think it's literally just someone who's not well at all um, and has a grudge against you, but that you have no idea about it. I mean, I would be seriously worried about whoever is behind this site. Um, it's very, you know, the stuff he's writing, or she, whoever it is, is very violent. Um, very disrespectful um, and there's so much time and energy put into it I would be seriously worried that they would be a danger to women you know Yeah I'm not so sure that um, these people can ever be found you know it's like you cut the head off a serpent and two heads grow back kind of thing you know what I'm saying well, There has to be a way to change that though because as, as you can tell from all the people who are ringing in this is going on just it's happened to so many people there has to be a way around to finding them otherwise it's never going to stop it stopped for you eventually, though, did it? It did. I um, I privatised a lot of my photos. I deleted so many people. I was very close to actually completely deleting my account. Um, so luckily for me, it has stopped. But it was it was a long it was a long road. I could, you know, it was very stressful, mm. very stressful period in my life at one stage when uh, and there was a couple of them up and running. Um, because you just don't know who's seen them. 
and uh, you know, not knowing who it was was you know even to this day really genuinely bothers me. Do you think it was motivated by somebody who didn't like you, or do you think oh. that it was purely a commercial thing? Um, I would. I, I think it was someone who didn't like me. Okay. But then you hear of cases. There was another girl in Cork that happened to her for a long time. It was actually her best friend doing it. You just don't know, you know. Yeah. I just, you know. And when I went to the guards about it, they said to me, "You probably will never know." So worry about stopping it rather than finding it is for now. Yeah. Okay. And then go from there. Um, but I mean, this, this I've never seen anything like what was going on on this website. I mean, it's two of my good friends who are on it, and the stuff that was written underneath their photos is just absolute venom. Um, so I would be genuinely worried about whoever this is. I hope they find who it is. And I, I would even be suggesting this person needs serious treatment because the, the violence and the hatred that he has or she has written towards the girl in this photo is it's just not normal. Yes, there are two men's names doing the rounds on social media this morning. A computer whiz has been in touch with this already and says he has tracked down one of the ringleaders in Cork. Um, and you know that there were references uh, to uh, some guy being local because he names local bars where local girls who are featured in it work. I guess they have part-time jobs in the bars and he knows where they are. Mm-hmm. So it is rather predatory in that regard. Thanks for taking well, the call, Adele. No problem. Have a good day. Cheers. Take care of yourself. Mind yourself. Um, Dangerous predator, she says. And this stuff that's up on the website is on a different level. It may well be, but her own story is a worrying one all the same. Friend contacted me to inform me that there's quite a few pictures of me on that porn porn site that you mentioned on your Facebook page. I looked at the website and there are very old pictures on it of me, almost eight years old, which I had up on MySpace and Bebo. Oh, my God almighty. You talk MySpace, you talk Bebo, you're talking about very young people. Uh, I deleted those profiles nearly eight years ago, so I have no idea how the person has them or why they would still have them. There are also pictures from the end of last year. They also cropped my ex out of two pictures, which is very strange. I'm feeling very unsettled about this and would greatly appreciate if you could try to get this page deleted or push the guardy to find out who has done it. Don't give on my details as the weirdo that put up the pictures used my real name on the site. Uh, but do keep me updated as I'm feeling creeped out about it. Thank you for that. I won't give out your name. There was a girl actually, there's a t- they see that text there. I've been targeted on that porn site as well, Neil, uh, with around over 30 selfies botched and manipulated and some with male body parts and male excretion on the printed out versions of the pictures. They take photographs of the girls, they print the photographs, of course, and you can imagine what they then do with them. I myself previously suffered from depression I suffered from anxiety and with help from family and friends, I've been able to live a normal life and go out with my friends, have a boyfriend, go to college, get a job. When I was contacted, uh, when a few of my friends saw these things yesterday evening, I was disgusted, but I underestimated the extent of the mental and sexual abuse on that website. There's over 30 pictures on the thread of me alone when I was 14 years old, around the time my depression plummeted and right up to the age of 17. I'm now 18 and there's no pictures of me since I've turned 18 on it. To say I feel violated is an understatement. Since I've viewed the comments, the pictures, it's had a huge impact on my depression. I feel so helpless because there's nothing I can do to remove the pictures. I spend my time now ever since crying hysterically all night last night without any sleep. I honestly feel personally violated by those men and fear going out in public in case they recognize me. I'd like to remain anonymous, if you don't mind, as I haven't yet told some family members because I'm afraid they'll be worried for my safety and for my mental health. Okay, can I just tell you that it's important that you do talk to a family member because I too and all of us would be worried also for your safety and your mental health. If you find the depression coming back and if you find, you know, you find it, you know, you said you're crying hysterically, you know, you need to share that with somebody. So a loved one or a friend is someone you need to talk it through with because we don't want it getting any worse. And we don't want you doing anything silly, okay? So do that. Talk to your mum. Talk to your mum. Your mum will be the most understanding person in the world. If your mum's not there, your dad. If not, a friend. Anne-Marie, good morning. Hi. Um, Your photographs, uh, have they been shared? Uh, Yeah, one with a friend. She was actually second in the the list. And when we went on to view it yesterday, um, I noticed I was in one of the photos with her. Okay, so this is the yeah. list of 30-odd that I have. Your friend mm-hmm. is number two on it. Oh, yes, I have yeah. her here. And in one of those photographs, you're in one of her shots. How many yeah. photographs of her in total? Over 30, I think. Okay, and what kind, um, of views, what kind of views on the photographs? 
Oh, um, my one especially was over 4,000 views anyway with her and the comments, Jesus, there were hundreds of comments like per picture, do you know? So it was quite scary to actually read some of the comments as well. Uh, most of them were about her. There was actually no comments about me, thank God. But I mean, some of the comments would make you want to go into meltdown. Do you know? Can you share, can you share any of them at this time of the morning? Um, yeah, like for instance, there was one photograph which kind of baffles me. It was taken by a photographer in a nightclub and my friend actually has her back to the camera and she's wearing a black top, black leggings. You can see a print of her underwear through it and the comments just went crazy because her underwear is kind of printed, do you know, through the pants. So the outline, yeah, you're talking about the outline, yeah. Yeah, yeah do you know, so they, how they want to, do you know, rip it off, do this, tie her up, all that crap, do you know. Tie her up. All little, the tiny little nudges, all the stupid marks, how they want to rip it up. Oh, can you see that underwear through the pants? What do you think of that? Uh, me and my friend as well, we would have been, we are big chested. So there was a lot of comments on the boob area, you know? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. So now it's not in that, like, but still, like, it must have been horrible for her because it's, the file was made about her, do you get me? It just so happens I appeared in one of the photographs. But, like, people are blabbing on about, oh, you shouldn't be sharing your Facebook pictures and all this. It's not even got to do with Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or any of them. It's it's nightclubs as well, do you know? You mightn't even be on Facebook and you're going into a nightclub, you're getting your photograph taken. They're after being put up on a site then, do you know? Mm. Like, I remember years ago, we used to go to um, the catwalk and stuff and you'd have a smile for Jimmy would come in and you'd pay him the five or he'd print the picture there and then it's yours and it's yours alone. Now you're going into clubs and you've talked for taking pictures. You don't know where they're going with the camera. They're posting then online. You might even be on Facebook, but your pictures are on it there anyway. Do you know what I mean? And then a girl will get a following and other fellas will start sharing, recognise her and start sharing photographs exactly. of her. And that's what's happened. And with your exactly. friend, she's got a subsection. She's part two. And you can yeah. view her. T- they call it view topic, which is actually mm-hmm. a list of photographs of her life. Yeah. You know, it's terrible. She was there was also a photographer um, with a caption as well. They said, "Oh my God, look, she's just after posting this this second. They were following her life. Do you know what I mean? They were following her every move. They were able to put up. Oh, she just posted this now. Oh, look what she's doing here. Oh, look what she's doing there. Uh, the comments then would follow. Oh, keep them pictures coming up, mate. Oh, keep tagging them pictures. Oh, keep getting more boob shots. Do you know, terrible. Like, but." As I was saying, it's not just Facebook. It's not in, it could be, it's just in it now, Neil, as we'd say. This year now in the summer, Little Mix are going to be down in the marquee. The likes of yourselves are going to be down now, snapping a load of pictures, having a great time. Red FM will put up all the pictures, see if it's getting to, and that's all it takes. You know, it's just, you know, other photographers and stuff, like, it's innocent out, but yes, it can be so damaging, you know. Yeah, I, I I know what you're saying. There are very strict rules, though, in taking photographs or sharing photographs of anyone under 18. Like I'll tell you, I was um, I was in a primary school uh, down in Mahan before Christmas because they had um, a Christmas show on, and they invited mm-hmm. me down to it because it was in one of the characters, and it was me. Um, one of the young fellows was me. But there were the greatest bunch of kids. Boy, we had a great yeah. time. But sure, they yeah. were primary school kids and uh, they wanted photographs and selfies and all sorts of things. And yeah. we did loads of things. But we had to check with all of the teachers and all of the teachers had to check yeah. with all of the parents before we could get any permission to use the photographs. You know? I know it's true, but like when the pictures are up there, like we'd say, what are those sex pigs now? Like our friends with your, like the Red FM page. That's all it takes from screen and be looking at We'd say a concert and click, 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 click. That's it. Pictures are taken. There's not more you can do. Whether you're on Facebook or not, whether you post it on yourself or not, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just a dangerous atmosphere. No matter what, no matter what way you look at it, you know. I've seen some comments on Facebook yesterday. People blaming the girls. That's what they get for posting on Facebook. They might be posting it on Facebook and it's someone completely different on it. You know what I mean? Because I noticed the photograph of me and my friend that are up. That was taken by a photographer. Those pictures were up and said, we had no control over that, you know what I mean? So if somebody, snaps, if somebody snaps you in a club, do they not say, can I take a picture? Oh, they would, like, and you would stand into it. But then what I was saying about the underwear shot then, her back is turned to that photograph. Like, it's like the photographer was taking a picture of the crowd and her back is to the picture of it. That's you know what the I mean? shot she they wanted, yeah. That's the shot they wanted. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then 
we'd say we'd have these maniacs then that are following my friend and they just stumbled across this picture or took it, you know what I mean? She didn't even know that picture was after being taken. She and that picture then gets listed to, gets joined up with all of the other pictures of her yeah, over the past four or five years. Then as well. yeah. Yeah. So it's like a file, yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's oh she's after posting this like as if it's uh, like it's if it's say um, for want of a better example, um, Beyonce or Madonna has put up a post or uh, let's say Kim Kardashian has put up a photograph. You know, yeah, they, but like, she didn't put up that photograph. It was like. We were all in a club, this photographer came in, took hundreds and hundreds of photographs. She didn't know that photograph was after been taken. Do you know, she got back to the camera. Do you know what I mean? She upset? Clearly. Uh, Yeah, I think she was, it was a lot worse yesterday, I think. Um, Today now she's in college, I was texting her earlier. Um, I think she's kind of doing okay, but I haven't voice talked to her. I can't tell what her voice is. There there should be some comfort from these girls by the fact that there are so many of them are victims, you know? Yeah. And that might sound yeah, a bit strange. Yeah, I said strange. that online yesterday. Like, my phone went crazy yesterday, people texting, because I had a status about it yesterday, and they were saying, oh my God, is this true? And so I deleted my Facebook page. I was like, it's not even got to do, it. Facebook has a lot to do with it. But, like, I mean, if they want your picture, they can get it. Do you know that kind of way? Fair enough. Fair play to you. Thanks for taking the call. No, Appreciate no it. No Cheers, bother. Anne-Marie. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Bye. It's one thing having um, a, your setting as private on your Facebook page, but if you have a private setting, it doesn't mean that the profile pictures can't be used and you can have lots of uh, profile pictures. Um, no one should be posting photographs of babies, really, when you think of it anymore now, I think, really, when you think of it. Um, it just is gone too crazy for that. Uh, Michael Kalachi is the safety expert with ImmunizeNet.ie. They're down in Clonakilty. I just want to get his thoughts on this. Michael, good morning. Good morning, Neil. How are you? Good. You're an expert in digital media. You're also a dad, I think, with daughters, so you can, you know, That's you right. can you can empathise with the people involved. Sorry, yeah. Mich- sorry, it's Michelle, not Michael. Sorry, Michelle. No, no worries, Neil. What are your thoughts? Uh, actually, we, we spoke about something similar uh, nearly a year ago, Neil. Uh, it was to do with um, an image that was uh, reshared from Snapchat uh, that had gone viral. Um, I mean, I mean, my my thoughts are are, are, are multiple fold. Um, uh, on, on on one hand, certainly um, there is some just smart stuff you can do to increase your privacy, um, to and, and and your safety. Um, and and so I guess what 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 we stress to parents um, is three main aspects. One, um, and, and parents and, and kids. Um, one, set your um, social media um, profiles to private. Um, and there's multiple levels of, pro- of private, particularly on, on Facebook. Um, second thing is on your profile images, particularly for kids, uh, we would suggest not using um, selfies, not using anything that um, that could be harvested. I mean, we, we've been aware of um, this going on for, for years and, and uh, the, the families and, and um, parents and kids we have been working with over the years in the schools, um, you know, we, we, have, we have made this point uh, that this is happening uh, for a few years now. Um, also, what you put in your profile um, information in what's called the bio, uh, to be very careful about that, because that could give out um, personal information and, and could um, identify your location. The other thing is most social media now uh, uses location services, um, so um, particularly uh, apps um, um, like Snapchat or Tinder, for instance, um, over 20% of um, secondary school um, kids in, in, in Cork are on Tinder, and we talk about that with them in school. And once they realize um, what potential danger they put themselves into by being on a uh, on an app that identifies your location, they, they're shocked. They, they didn't, oftentimes, or most times, they didn't really realize that, uh, that, that that's what's happening. Is that a smart place for people in secondary school to be on Tinder? Uh, personally, I really don't think so. No, because um, you, you know, the, the whole app is based on the fact that that you you know you're within a certain radius, so you know the person. Yeah, you're in a certain radius for right. sex, isn't that what it is? Well, well, not necessarily. I mean, you know, a lot of them use it, use it just as another social media outlet. So I'm not necessarily suggesting it's it, it's just for sex, but uh, but in theory, a predator could use it to um, identify a location of of, of somebody. Um, and then the other very important point I want to make is is on on social media in general. Whatever your privacy settings, that's a great step. But if your circle of friends is outside of people that you actually know and trust to the degree you can trust anybody. Um, you're, you know, you're essentially in, in, nearly inviting, you know, people to um, 
to come and, and, and take information from you. This is uh, what happened on many of these cases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and I'm, I'm by all means, I'm, I'm in no way suggesting that it's it, it, it's any of the girls' fault. Uh, I think it was main, mainly girls. Um, I have I've kids myself, and and I mean, we're pers- I'm personally very pragmatic about uh, about these things. I, I don't you know restrict them using it. Uh, I think they should learn how to use it as safely as possible. What's the legal age? Well, 13 in, in, in theory, but uh, we know from working with primary schools uh, that a lot of primary school kids use social media. And I think it would be probably um, not very fruitful to try and combat that. Um, so you could have a, a serious minor, really, a t- oh, 10, yeah, yeah. 11, 12, 13 yeah. year old, yeah. uh, having conversations with adults pretending that they too are 13 or 14 year olds. And they are. We know that they are. Uh, we know this from, from, from working with kids in, in, in schools, uh, that that's what's happening. They're, they're quite open to us when we, when we do workshops with them about, you know, what they do and what has happened to them. And, and a lot of them have, you know, uh, had, had these kind of encounters. They've had co- encounters with adults? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. What do the adults ask them for? Um, they, they generally try and, try and build some sort of relationship of trust in order to get, uh, to, to get information and, 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 Generally, um, if they're not from 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 the same location, they generally look for look for images. Uh, I mean, there, there's a huge market for, for these images. Oh, they want they them to be to from a different location. I don't think it really matters. I mean, sites such as the one you're discussing today, um, they're they're mostly international, and and really the, the, the location where they're based is, is is really irrelevant, and they probably changed the whole. Oh, I know, but I'm, the point I'm making is, you say that these adults, um, it, it's it's men preying on young girls, right? Generally, yeah. Okay, and they want them to share uh, intimate photographs of the children of themselves. Yes, this yeah. has happened. I mean, we, we've had we've had kids describe that scenario um, to us, unfortunately. Yes. Um, now, w- one thing that that I, I'm not sure anybody has brought up yet on, on, in this conversation is something that um, is is only available commercially, but but in future uh, will will probably be something that uh, people will use mainstream on Google and, and other search engines. Is as soon as facial recognition becomes mainstream, it changes the landscape completely. Because what do you mean? These images, so any of these images now today that are on this website, right? Um, if if in the future when when facial recognition becomes becomes mainstream, anybody can take any picture they find of somebody, and uh, with that picture as opposed to the name, search for similar or other pictures of that same person. So then all these images would come. Uh, will come to light if they're on the web somewhere. At the click, at the click of a mouse. That's right. Yeah. Now, yes. can these people be found and prosecuted, or how difficult would that be? With the right equipment, you, you yeah. I mean, law enforcement, you know, would have cyber uh, combat or cyber crime units that that are very highly sophisticated uh, in equipment. And I think you had a chap earlier on who's very computer savvy, who's uh, who's been able to track some people down. Um, he claims he's tracked down claims, one of two yeah, men. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, yeah. when you hear of thing like, uh, things like Ireland Exposed, which is the subsection for the Cork girls, yeah. I mean, uh, whoever put that up, can he be found? Um, if they're very sophisticated, it's very, very difficult. They're probably hiding behind, uh, you know, multiple different um, remote servers with, with um, what's called virtual private networks uh, behind various IP addresses. So, you know, it, 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 you're probably chasing... Uh, a very active tail uh, that's constantly trying to run away from you. Um, so it's it's very very difficult. And, and as you I think suggested earlier, uh, you shut one down, another two pop up. Plus, you know, this isn't a new phenomenon. This has been going. We, we've been talking about this uh, with, with parents and kids for for quite a while now. And these photographs of these young girls who've been tracked. You're talking about girls whose lives have been tracked from the age of 13 upwards. Yeah, uh, it's almost like a yeah. you know, it's it's like a a biog of them. These men exactly. follow them for years and years as they as they grow up. Um, will this dog them all of their lives, or will this come back to haunt them in the future? Do you think, in a in a, in a professional sense, or a career sense, or a relationship sense? Well, uh, protecting one's um, um, I guess digital um, profile and, and and one's reputation is is something we very actively talk with kids about, and it's as much an opportunity actually to create positive digital reputations and, and online re- reputations as it, is, as it is to tarnish them. Uh, so we look for kids to, uh, for, for teenagers who, you know, are using social media and, and older children to, to try and, um, you know, and, and, and do positive stuff online so that, so, so that their um, reputation online is, is largely positive because, you know, many, many children and teenagers will do great and wonderful things in life and, and, and post those that, you know, can overcast other shadows of, of, of more negative stuff. 
No, but uh, my point is, can it, avoid. you know, can it, can it dog them? Can it yes, follow them? Yes, it can. Yeah, I mean, ninety percent of um, of recruiters will now uh, look on social media to 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 verify, you know, or just to, to look at so to get an idea of who you know who's who's applying for 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 a job. So, so nine and nine and ten will do that. So you'd be inclined uh, to pass on from a girl whose photograph had been manipulated or doctored or photoshopped or used like that, you probably would move on to the next candidate, would you? Well, you mind me, I'm not a recruitment expert. I'm, 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 I can't You'd be inclined to err on the side of caution, though. Well, I, th- I think, uh, you know, humans probably work like that, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, Is there any good that comes out of this at all, do you think? Well, my, 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 my personal hope would be, if nothing else, uh, and, and, I mean, I feel awful for, for the kids that this has happened as, as, as I said earlier you know I've got three daughters myself and, and, and you know um, it, I, I can't you know it, it, it's very very traumatic to, to, to find that kind of invasion having happened um, if there's any hope I have it's, it's, it's just that um, children and parents would be much more mindful of their online lives and I'm not saying stay away from it um, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big fan of technology and, and, and use social media actively myself and all that uh, I, I think it's a, you know it, it can do much good um, but just to be extremely mindful and j- just to, to, to bear in mind that whatever you do online whether you believe you're doing it in a private circle of friends th- there's just no such thing really as private because as I said 88% of pictures even sent to a, in a, just one friend online will be reshared. Okay. What about parents who put pictures up of young babies and toddlers? What's your advice there? This might sicken you a little further, but there's actually a subculture on Instagram um, um, where um, where mainly mainly uh, women and, and, and in some cases men um, take other people's babies' photos uh, and pretend that it's their babies, uh, and they do what's what's called role playing. Um, now I've, I've no idea what the psychology behind it. Uh, I can't for life of me figure out what's going on there. Um, but, but but that's happening. So yes, um, a lot of baby pictures we know um, are, um, are are being in the same way harvested and reused. Well, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be advising that people should take b- photographs of little babies in cots or cribs or lying on a bed or anything like that. Which to all of us would look lovely. Ah, oh, isn't that great? Isn't she beautiful? And all that kind of thing. Ah, oh, she's a dote. But to others, of course, they'd look at it in a very perverse frame of mind. Yes, and I, and I, I, I guess that's what was kind of hard to get our heads around the fact oh, yeah. that yeah. We, we, you know, we, we look at an image in one way as you know, as, as, as normal people, let's say, and, and and others just just view them in, in in a bizarre, twisted kind of a way that we we can't quite understand. But we, I guess, we just have to accept that if 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 you want to have that kind of exposure online, then then that's. That's the risk it carries. That's the risk it carries. Appreciate it, Michelle. Thank you for Not taking the call. Take care. All Michelle Kalachi, safety expert with immunizenet.ie. Download the Neil Prendeville podcast for free from iTunes. Clark's Red FM. Right. Meanwhile, uh, you just wanted to come up to speed with uh, what's been happening online. Well, no, I just want to kind of acknowledge that a lot of people have been contacting us here. Um, there's a picture, a name and a picture of a guy, I'd say in his mid 30s, um, doing the rounds on social media. I mean, it's been shared almost 200 times now. So, which is quite dangerous, actually, because, you know, we're liaising with the guards on this one. We've given all the details that we have, the girls' names, and the girls have been onto the guards here as well in Anglesey Street. Um, but people are resharing this guy's image and calling him all sorts of names and things like that. I mean, you know, we can't be absolutely sure um, that this is him. I've actually had three different guys' names given to me since yesterday. Um, so we need to be super cautious on that one as well, just in case. I mean, the nature of this is that people's pictures are being shared and, you know, the wrong, wrong yeah. thing. Yeah, so it them. takes one person to get, let's say this guy, I don't know whether it is him or not, but mm-hmm. one of the photographs, let's say it's not him. Yes. It only takes one person to post it and it goes viral and then everybody is having a snap. Exactly, yeah. So as I said, it's not gone up long. It's uh, up a little while and it's been shared 200 times. So yeah, just be super care- careful. I know the guards are on it and, um, but as I said, three names of three completely different guys. Now, it does make sense though because I, I'm sure a lot of the Facebook pages that we've been sent are are just set up I mean it's no guy he, all you have to do yeah is put up a picture and that's why you were saying the sports star is up there there's no picture of him but this is an actual genuine picture of a guy um, who could well be from Cork and who could well be innocent so just be careful what you're resharing on Facebook at the moment the guards are on it OK appreciate that some of the girls actually thank you Emer. some of the girls actually are fighting back against people who are saying it's their own fault 
to the people that say it's the girl's own fault, excuse me, I have selfies of my face and there's nothing dirty or sexual about them. So how is it that my own, how is that my fault? I'm 22 years of age. I can post pictures of myself. It doesn't mean they're dirty to be putting on those pages. It's a disgrace. She says, an effing disgrace. Sorry now, but it's after happening to me. And I'm not friends with this person's page or anyone I don't know to see or talk to. Stop making it out to be our fault. And mine goes back to 2013 when I was pregnant and back again to my school pictures. So excuse all your horrible comments as if seeing yourself on a porn site wasn't bad enough. But you always have to be sure there'll be people out there who come along and knock you down some more. That's from Claire. Uh, Morning. I just found pictures of my daughter on this disgusting site. She was only 14 at the time. Also, myself and my 10-year-old daughter are in there too. I'm horrified. Can't believe how sick these people are and it must be someone she knows on her page because her page is private. Uh, Ash says, I've just seen two girls that I know on it. I know one of their names and have messaged her and I know where the other one works. So I wrote a message to them asking them um, asking them to tell the second girl. This is absolutely crazy. Uh, disturbing. Some people adding pictures of Irish girls and saying it's their sister-in-law, their cousin, etc. And people photoshopping them into uh, horrific pornographic pictures. Sick individuals, says Lisa. Let me talk to Katie, who's a popular blogger on Lee side, and indeed, as bloggers can be around the world. She's got Katie's curvy closet. She's got 40,000 followers. That's interesting in itself. Uh, but her image was robbed and used on dating sites. Katie, good morning. Was the, hang, Just one moment. Sorry, Katie. Let me just pull you in here. Katie, good morning. Morning, Neil. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, these photographs that were robbed or harvested or stolen what were they used for they've been like it's it's happened twice to me um and and all the girls that i know it's happened a few times as well now for for a start my pictures i usually watermarked um and or else like it's different for me because i have a brand and my instagram isn't on private my facebook my personal facebook is private but my blog page has 63,000 followers so I can't put any of that on private because this is what it's about like this is about sharing it but my personal pictures of friends family things like that anything I don't want to share is under under lock you know Okay so you have um, 63,000 people following you this yeah. is 63 different individuals Yeah Okay and the, when you say watermarked what do you mean? So when I do like photo shoots with photographers and stuff like that, a lot of the time they, there's a mark put on them. Now you can't see them. You can't see the mark. I don't actually fully understand it myself. I just know that there's a mark on it that if I see it, one of those photographs being used somewhere else, it's like a copywriting. It's like a copyright thing. But I got the first the first um, instance was, um, well, the, the, the most recent instance was last year and my picture, I got tagged on Instagram by a girl, obviously, that follows my, my page. Um, and she said, um, she just tagged me and it didn't say anything. So it was all in Spanish. So I had no clue. And I actually didn't look at the picture. I was just reading what was underneath. So I Googled it and it said there was an event in the shopping centre, uh, quite a large shopping centre in uh, Puerto Rico in South America. Apparently, I was supposed to be there that day because my picture was on the poster. It was a curvy, a curvy kind of um, a fashion day. Um, I was supposed to be there alongside this other this other girl, um, and we weren't there at all. And this was being shared over and over again. And I was saying, how? Like this is South America. It's a long way now to get to a shopping centre from Cork City to South America. So, so different was, modelling shots. <laughs> and yeah. also, yeah, and but they're was, using you. But they, I, there was nothing I could do about that. I had to contact the person that did it, and she said, "Look, I'm so sorry that I, I took your picture." I said, "You shouldn't have. There was no. You had no right to take my picture, or at least contact me and say, can I use such and such an image?'" So why didn't you ask them for a fee? I did, but she took it down. I said, "Look, well, if you want to use my my stuff, you're going to have you have to pay for it, like." And and she just took it down. And she got rid of it. Yeah, you could hardly sue somebody in South America, I suppose. Exactly. And tell me about the dating sites. Were these uh, yeah, dating sites was, dating sites inverted commas? Um, no, they were. It was like the likes of plenty of fish and things like that, which happened a lot of people. Um, I got contacted to say you're on this thing, but it was pictures from like a long time ago and. It, I don't know, obviously it was, it's, I don't think it was anybody I knew. We, we couldn't figure out who it was, but it was just taken down and, and the guys were contacted. That was the same time that my pictures were put 
um, on they were taken and they were put on a website in Siberia. Now we had to do kind of background checks into that um, because they were trying to get other girls to join this modelling agency by using my pictures. Um, they put my pictures on a page and they were adding girls from all over the world. Now they did add two of the girls that were in the same agency as me. That's how we found out. Um, one of the girls contacted me and she said, Katie, there's um, a page set up solely for you um, as saying that you're working with this certain with this certain modelling agency. This modelling agency then was adding all these girls and obviously asking them for a fee if they wanted to, to, to be a model. What a racket. Um, That's a yeah. racket. And obviously so, you would have very yeah. vulnerable young girls would sign That's up and course. spend money. And tell me about the incident involving being catfished. What's being catfished? Catfished means like where there's pictures of you used and people are talking to you thinking that they're talking to you, but they're not. They're talking to somebody else. Could be a male, could be a female, who knows. And um, yeah, it, it happened like that. Now, when my pictures were used on, on a dating site, obviously it wasn't me. So it was somebody that I knew just by chance was slagging, said, I'm after seeing your, your picture up on whatever it was, plenty of fish or whatever. And um, you're a busy at, girl, like at yeah. the time I said, I'm not on that at all. <laughs> at the time I was saying, and he was saying, oh, yeah, you, you have to pull in a fast one there or whatever, having this crack. And I said, no, seriously, I'm not. So all the details, um, like even the information was wrong, like my profession, my height, my this, my that. Now, my, my, my height and things like that are easily found online, you know. Um, so everything was just, and what they wrote underneath, like their, what they were interested in and things like that, they didn't match up. But he took the pictures. Why, but why did they want to pretend to be you? I don't know, maybe, I like, I suppose, you see, that's the thing, this is how, like, it could have been a man, just say, for instance, that a girl went on it, and, or a guy went on it, just, just to say, and, and, and this, that it could be a man that's, that's pretending to be me, or it could be a female, like, there's a programme on, on television where they, they solely do a programme on catfishing, and um, that these people are online dating and they're online on the computer and then they meet up and it's somebody totally different. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. I've seen that. I've seen one of those documentaries, yeah. It's frightening because, like, for... There's, there's young girls going on these dating sites and it, it is, like, it's madness. I've heard of girls 16, 17, 18 going on these dating sites, which is ridiculous in the first place, but this is the world we live in. This is, this is the time that we are in. And, like, of course... They're talking to somebody through the computer. They don't know who it is. This could be a six-year-old man. It yeah, could be, you yeah. know, it's, And this is how easy... So are young girls growing up way too fast, do you think? Unbelievably fast. Unbelievably fast. And even for years, it's going on for years, but since Facebook came out, people add people. People add people they don't know. And then they send a message... Um, do I know you? And then a conversation is struck up, and then it tells your game or whatever that whatever it said. A conversation is struck up within the space of a couple of seconds, and especially for a young girl, they're vulnerable any age. Well, like especially for younger women or and men, but they're you know, they're vulnerable at that age. And when there's somebody giving them attention or speaking to them online, and then it's grooming basically. But it's it's easily done. And my biggest thing that I would say to people is. Do not accept anybody you don't know because even nowadays, like with Facebook, if you click, if you like um, a post on somebody's page, it can it can pop up on other people's pages, which is ridiculous. I, I find that concept mental because um, like I have things on my news feed that I don't even know these people, but somebody belonged to me or a friend of mine might have liked it and I don't know this person's status or picture or it's it's too open now so people have to be extra vigilant. But a lot of this is the fact that everybody wants to have the most likes and everybody That's wants it. to have the most fans and I and, I, and friends and I even said oh Katie's got 63,000 yeah. followers, yeah. you know what's next, 80, 100,000 yeah. she's going to hit a million <sighs> And someone said to me recently they were saying how did you get all these people and I I started, you know yourself like I, I just fell into this and 
I started the, the, the it wasn't even a blog at the start it was a page for the modelling and then I started it into because I do beauty and different bits and bobs and I just made it into something and then all of a sudden there's 63,000 people and God only knows who half these people are now I do know a lot of the, the people and, and a lot of them do you don't know the 63 things. of them 63, <laughs> I don't know 63,000 altogether <laughs> but there's a lot of people that I would know through you know especially through beauty business and things like that and it's great for connecting, but I have to, I, even myself, I have to be so careful what I put up right. because people are sharing it. But the thing is, what I find on, on, on the internet is people are putting up pictures of their kids, like their teenagers, they're all day, every day. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a field. It's just people can pick these pictures up instantly. Instantly, when you hashtag something, it goes out into cyberspace, and you have no control over what, who sees it, who has it, who uses it, um, and it, you just need to be extra vigilant. And unfortunately, so, these, you know, you know, for there to be sexual predators, they don't have yeah, to be physically in your face. Of course, don't. the sexual they, predator can be online, and we are fueling an industry. Um, they can of, be on the other side of the world. Yeah. They don't even have to be in the same place as you, and that's exactly like you really, gotcha. really do have to be so vigilant with what you put up online, who you're accepting, who you're interacting with. What sites? You're, what you're clicking on? Because you know yourself. When my when my card recently was um, with my accounts were hacked through the internet because I I clicked on something by accident. Um, but they have to be so vigilant because there's so many different things out there now. Was and your what, bank what, cleaned out? It was. I was on to you that time. It was there was poker chips. There was they they used poker chips. They paid for poker chips somehow. But I did get it reimbursed. Um, but like that, trading a clue. I got a message one day on Facebook saying your your uh, your receipt is now ready uh, for a couple of hundred. Um, they bought poker chips. Yeah. I can't play poker I in real life. Not a mind on the internet. I know, I know, so I know, I know, I know. It's just it's huge, and people just need to up the security. Right. But it's like what he's done is absolutely vile, absolutely vile. Okay, but well, the pictures are out there, and the girls, uh, the girls themselves. I mean. It's so it's it's shocking for them. It's shocking for everybody, but it's just for everybody else to be so vigilant with their online profiles. Lock everything down. Privatize it. Do not accept anybody you don't know, and just be very very careful about. Thanks, Katie. Rest. We'll talk again. Appreciate it. We're All going right. to pick up on Thanks this in the morning much. as well. Cheers for now. Well Thanks, said. Uh, well well done to Katie. Uh, her own blog is um, uh, very very popular. Um, Tell you what I do. I'm going to take a break, but before no, it's okay. That's all right. Before I take a break, if you uh, yeah, if you if you want to check out Katie's blog, do so. Katie's curvy closet. The Neil Prenderville Show, weekdays from nine a.m. one hundred four to one hundred six. Red FM.